Hello, people of the internet. It is I, Tofu Ace, here to play some Kerbal Space Program. The lovely Kerbin Jewel is hovering over the horizon in the background. So let's get started. We might even be able to go to the Mun. Alright, future me here. I had some problems with the rocket design. Dark Star, as you can see before you. Um, first off, at this stage of the game, I did not like how it looked to my eyes. There was something about it, just it wasn't meshing with me. I don't know if it was the ladders. I, I rarely use those ladders anyway, but I mean, I have no choice. Those are the only ladders that I have. I should be glad I even have ladders to begin with. <laughs> There's people that go to the Mun and they don't have ladders. Ah, loading screens. Everybody loves loading screens, don't they? Insert joke here about loading screens. I'll fix that in post. No, wait, I am in post. What am I doing? Oh, well. I'll fix that in post post. <laughs> of course, it's going to be loud because I'm playing with KW Rocketry for the boosters and engines. So, brace yourself. Oh, boy, that was loud. <laughs> As with a lot of things in my current installation and mod folder, I could probably fix that, but eh, kind of lazy. <laughs> Don't really feel like researching and doing things and having to fix stuff on my own when I can just have the mod people do it for me. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think a lot of those people are waiting for the next version of Kerbal Space Program so they can fix some problems that they've run into or haven't been able to fix on their own yet. And this is for various mods. Not exactly KW Rocketry or anything you see here before you. Speaking of which, Volumetric Clouds. i never uh, seen them with the rocket launch before. We have seen them before with an airplane, but not with the rocket launch. It really, I think it, it really looks better with the rocket than it does with the plane. Uh, that makes sense though, because we we're just we we're flying by it really quickly, and it looks spectacular from above and below. Yeah, that looks great. Anyway, we have lost our first stage, decoupled it, we've decoupled our second stage, and now we have some instability problems, and if you noticed before, I'm using a really steep angle for my uh, climb. I'm trying to do my gravity turn and rotate at the same time and keep everything stable, but fortunately, yeah, you see those top tanks, they're not aligned with the bottom tanks. The boosters in the bottom. I would love to say that my subconscious was trying to warn me, that's why I felt a little iffy about this, this uh, Dark Star design, but <laughs> probably not. I probably just didn't like the look of the ladders or something, and I was like, eh, yeah, I don't know about this. But let's test it anyway, see if we can get to the Mun, <laughs> or at least in orbit. Yeah, I can fix that in the future really easily by rotating the bottom stages. But we are going into orbit. I finally was able to turn my rocket towards the horizon, so we're going to be A-OK -okay now. As you can see, I'm messing around with that toolbar, trying to move it away. I'm like, oh, I can enable Kerbal Alarm Clock. Oh no, it's flickering like crazy now. And even the buttons on Kerbal Alarm Clock, the menu there, like, some of them are not showing the icon that it should. So I'm trying to fix it. It's like, okay, I got to stop, stop flickering now. And oh no, it went away again. Now it's flickering again. And it actually flickered that much in-game during real time and not uh, fast-forwarding through this clip like I'm doing now. It didn't matter. I got to the point where I could break it and have it fixed on demand until I finally broke it completely and that button went away. But it left the Kerbal Alarm Clock menu still there. So I, after a while, I ended up not even messing with it anymore. So you don't have to worry about seeing me going through all these sc uh, screens and menus. I don't know if I have a conflict with my mods 
To get Kerbal Alarm Clock to work apparently in 0.35.5, the, the ARM update, you had to update Blizzy's toolbar, I think that's what it's called, which is this uh, menu system that a lot of mods use. So I did that, and I even checked the version, it's the current version of that mod. And I'm having problems, so maybe I have to reinstall Kerbo Alarm Clock. I'm gonna try that after I, I, I edit this video and finish all that stuff, right? Anyway, back to your scheduled programming. Alright, I think I'm gonna do this in IVA, Internal View. Let's change over some of these screens here. Uh, no, what about, I think I had a camera behind, there we go. Now we can see behind us. Alright, so we have our information display. Let me, let me, uh, set the target so the information will show up. Hmm. Yeah, okay. So, and then the middle, of course, is our nav ball. Fast forward through here. We get to see Kerbin just zoom by, rotating along its axis. This looks really cool. I don't know. I think it's probably about around here that we should start burning. Let's uh, let's make sure. Okay, future me again. Just plotting a path here. Make sure we get a well as an efficient burn and di uh, not direction <laughs> one direction sure why not they're my uh, command and control back on Kerbin trying to help me tell me I'm beautiful <laughs> take it from me if you're gonna get somebody to head your command station back on Kerbin get one direction they're great guys highly talented the tweens love them what could go wrong? Alright, let's uh, <laughs> orient ourselves with this node here. And get our mission moving on. Into the sphere of influence of the month. I love these, um, you know, the shadows and the sunlight peering through the window of the command pod. Oh, fantastic. Beautiful game. For being in the Unity engine, this is just amazing. Like, this is the same engine that people make crazy little casual games for, like, the iPod. Uh, iPod? <laughs> iPad. <laughs> Why did I say iPod? Uh, <laughs> I don't even know if, like, people have seen an iPod within the last a few years, at least. Okay, we can probably fast forward through some of this. Um, although I might just get lazy and not fast forward through anything. Who knows? Who knows what's going to go on in the future? Oh, the crazy future. Future, why you be so crazy? So let's prepare to transfer our orbit into... The sphere of influence of the Mun. I always like this transitional time period since we can get really nice shots and video of not only of Kerbin, but also whatever uh, planetary body that we're flying into. Well, I guess uh, moon orbiting bo body. I don't know what you call it. A natural satellite? I have no idea. <laughs> That's science. And science requires a smart. Ah, but still a beautiful sight, isn't it? Oh, uh, by the way, we have our solar panels extended. Never fly out here without having those extended, because it's uh, it could be tough. <laughs> you could lose power, and you might have to do a few orbits around the Mun until you regain enough power back to start doing science again and transmitting and all that stu good stuff. Or if you have a probe, it's just dead in the water. Or dead in space in this instance. 
and no one can hear you scream. Do robots scream with bits of one and zero? I don't know. I do know that they do not dream of electric sheep. All right, here we go. We're in the sphere of influence around the Mun. We need to prepare our retro burn to be captured by its gravity well. You could probably do all this manually, uh, but I had that that uh, maneuver node already plotted out just to give us a reference. Also, I want to see how it looks like in our MFD. You can see that to our, the left, the multifunction display. Uh, right now it's just a blue line, a teal line, arcing over that shows our escape trajectory. And if it's anything like the orbiter, game, we'll see it uh, slowly turn into an elliptical orbit and then circularize as the circles expand. I think we need to get a little bit closer before we start our burn, so let's do that. We're slightly accelerating towards the gravity well as it pulls us in, but yeah, we're still far off. At these distances from the surface, we're not really traveling very fast in, in relation to the body, right, of uh, Mun, of the Mun. So it does take a long time for us to be able to get into position where we want to burn and have a low orbit around the Mun. Yes, here we go. Finally, the time and place we've been waiting for. Flame on, let's burn. You can see it actually shows us the orbit inside the MFD on the left. You can see the rings expanding to meet the orbit as we circularize it. I had to stage there, so that's why I paused in thought. Okay, here we go. Everything is looking good. Let's get rid of that node. Okay, circularized. Let us now have a lower orbit on the dark side of the Mun. That way, when we're when we have that as our periapsis, we can lower our apoapsis on the the day side and we can land on the day side. <laughs> 